Impact. It's so great to be here with you guys this morning. Thank you so much for logging on with us. Um, if you're new here, I'm Becca and welcome to Impact. We're so glad that you could join us this morning. Before we get into the service, I have a couple things to mention. Nothing really new. I think I mentioned these last week, but tonight at my house, Jill and Butchie Maker's house, we are having the high school and the young adults joining together. We're having a cookout, so you can just come out, both young adults and high school. We also have an outdoor service next Sunday, which is May 26, 10.30 at the Weirton Event Center. Outdoor service, we're gonna be honoring our graduates, we're gonna have a baptismal, we're having Mission Barbecue, Kona Ice, Hot Dog Station, so we have a bunch of food. And a reminder, we do have a bounce house and also a softball game. So you're gonna wanna bring your lawn chairs, you're gonna wanna bring socks for the bounce house, and you're gonna wanna bring a bat and a glove to play softball if you wanna do that. So don't remember, uh, don't forget those things. And if you want to get baptized, you can just go on our app or on our website, impact3.org, to register. It's not too late to sign up, so if you feel called to do that, go ahead and hop on our app or our website. And that's all I have. Oh, actually, one more. Sorry. We do have another announcement. The Jefferson County Christian Students for Life group are hosting a screening of Unplanned, which is an incredible story of Abby Johnson. That's tonight at 7 p.m. at the Weird Movie Theater. It's $5 per person for a ticket, and all of the profits and donations go to the JCCS Student for Life. So if you want to do that, that's tonight at 7 p.m. And those are all the announcements I have.
Thank you, Lord. Christ is my firm foundation. So 
Thank you, God. Thank you, God. <laughs> he is great. He is so great. Thank you, Lord. Here is 
Up the ground of all my tradition, break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better, yeah. Cause your way is better, yeah. Shake. shake up the ground of all my tradition, break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better, your way is better, your way is better, yes, it is. God, shake up the ground. All my tradition, break down the walls. All my religion, your way is better. Yeah. Your way is better. Yeah. Shake up the crowd. All my tradition, break down the walls. All my religion.
Have you made room for him today? You know, sometimes um, that's one of the scariest things to do is to make room for God because I'm a person that likes to have control and I have a hard time giving up control. But it was one of the best decisions I ever made in my life because I found out a life where I wasn't in total control was a life of total freedom. I didn't have to do all the worrying. I didn't have to do all of the carrying of the burdens. I didn't have to do it all. I needed help. And if you're here today and you're someone like me that's a control freak, there is hope for us. <laughs> There's hope. So let's make room for him today. Let's pray together. God, we just come before you this morning saying we are open we are empty. We are ready for you to fill us up, Lord. We want to get rid of us and fill us with more than you. Lord, I heard this morning uh, about um, just a, a God of Sunday morning and, and then walking away and just living our lives saying, I'm a good person. I love my neighbor. God, I don't want to be that. I want more. And I pray that these people want more, Lord, that it's not just a Sunday morning experience. It's a lifestyle. It's a way of living. It's putting you first, Lord, not what I want. So, Father, I just pray this morning that as Kendon comes and presents your message, that you are all in it, Lord, that it's not Kendon we see, that it's, that it's the Father, that it's the Son, that it's the Holy Spirit that we see this morning. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, thank you. You can be seated. Uh, I have a couple of announcements this morning. Actually, I have three, and they're all very important, I think. Um, the Catalyst Youth in High School and the Young Adults are having a cookout tonight at the Shoemaker's House at 530 so it'd be a good night, you know, if you've never been there before, it'd be a good night to go and just kind of have some fun and hang out with everybody. So that is the high school and the young adults at the same time, 5.30, Shoemakers. Um, then there's an announcement on here for the Jefferson County Christian School Students for Life. They're hosting a screening of Unplanned, The Incredibles True Story of Abby Johnson, and it's got something to do with uh, Planned Parenthood. That's tonight at 7 o'clock at the Weirton Movie Theater in, on Penco Road. So tickets are $5, and all the profits and donations go to JCCS Students for Life. So if you're looking for something to do on this warm evening, uh, it might be kind of nice to get in the air conditioning at, at the movie theater in Weirton and see that, and help also help out uh, the JCCS Students for Life. Uh, next Sunday, do not show up here at 1115. We will not be here. You need to show up at the Weirton Event Center at 1030. And there's some things that we're requiring of you. And the one thing is to bring a chair. <laughs> Unless you like standing. I mean, you could do that too. Um, we will be baptizing people. Uh, rumor has it on the street that we may have over 20 baptisms. So it is going to be exciting. Like, you can't miss that. Can't miss it. And uh, I told Stephanie earlier... Um, we needed to make the announcement that if your child is going to be in the bounce house, please bring socks for them. And I said, we don't need to bring socks. It sounds like we need to bring towels. <laughs> so if you want to throw a couple beach towels in your car, you, you, know, you never know when the spirit moves. Or you might help somebody else out. Um, 
There's going to be the honoring of graduates as well. And we're having mission barbecue. Mm -hmm, that's never bad. Uh, Kona ice, a hot dog station. I mentioned the bounce house for the kiddos. And softball. So bring your uh, glove and bat, maybe a ball for softball if you'd like to play. And then if you would still like to get baptized, that is still available to you. So get on the app and register for that so we can kind of plan for that. And also, if you're uh, graduating this year from high school or college, please get on that app and register as well so that we can honor you next week too. Um, communion is in the back corner, as it always is, so if you'd like to avail yourself of that, please do that before you leave. Brendan. Man's equipped, carrying, <laughs> carrying his stuff. Hey, Amen. How many glad to be here today? Come on, I said, how many glad to be here today? The Lord is, the Lord is good. I'm double duty today. One of our guys is not here to help out. We're praying for him. Listen, there. I want to say this real quickly. Um, a lot of needs in the church and I know people are quick to take off after service please stick around yes. after service yes, I, I, I try okay. to I don't ever try to put God on the, uh, on the time limit but I also believe that ministry and God moving is not just limited to the preaching that's just part of it. And so I try to be mindful time-wise, knowing there's demands uh, on our lives. You know, we, we, Stephanie and I went to, yesterday went, drove to Charleston, sat at a track meet for a while, drove back from Charleston last night, got home 10, 11 o'clock at night, and then you had to wake up and go to, go to service. So I understand a lot of things are going on, but part of the, the part of God ministering is, you know, you have worship, you have preaching, and you have fellowship. And I find for me the greatest times of ministry is talking to people. And so there's a lot of need. So once once service is over, please just take time in the foyer. I may take five, ten minutes, just talk talk with some people. Robin, you're looking great. How are you doing? You're, you're getting there, you're pressing through. You're pressing through those that don't know Robin. She's she's battling cancer, so we've been praying for her. Keep her praying. I thought I seen Eric. Eric, throw your hand in the air. Uh, Eric lost his sister uh, this week, so it, it can mean a huge difference of just taking a, taking a moment, and just talking to somebody. Just hey, just want to check on you, want to see how you're doing, and maybe there's other needs that I don't know of, and I apologize if I didn't get to you know. Hey, what about my needs? We're praying for you. We're praying for you. You have prayer cards on your. Uh, on your pews there. Man, fill those out. Fill them out during service. Maybe not while I'm preaching, but fill them out. And then at the end, we want to be able to pray for you. We want to know what's going on in your life. You're, you're just, we say it all the time. You're not just a number to us. You're not just like, you know, just a person that just comes in. We, we want to know what's happening. We want to know how we can help fulfill, see the plans of God fulfilled in your life. Amen? Amen. Hey, just to elaborate a little bit after what uh, Miss Judy said, next week, just one service. We've been doing it, I don't know, almost since the beginning when we launched the, launched the service, uh, our launched Impact Church. We started uh, in 2014. We did some launch services, but we just started going it on Memorial Day weekend and just having a, a great time. And then we started getting a little bit more people. We started to ball our ball, ball. Softball games. Um, if Jules, Jules, is Jules, is Jules here? You can't play softball. <laughs> She's like some all-American, some great, she was just down, we, nobody will hit the ball. She was hit the ball. If you can play, you take it easy. That's your butch. But you're getting old these days, amen. So, I don't even play anymore. I think I ran first base one time and that was it. I was like, I'm done. Man. But hey, bring uh, Butch, you're doing softball, right? So if you're interested in playing softball, Butch, throw your hand in here just so people know if they're new. That's Butch. Um, listen, everything's everything's free. Uh, Mission and Barbecue will come. They'll have everything set up. We'll just go um, pull pork. What do we have instead? Brisket, pulled pork, 
baked beans and all that. Listen, we're, we're from, I'm not from here. My wife's from the South. I'm from here. My wife is from Hilton Head, South Carolina, but we love barbecue. So if you don't like barbecue, I apologize. We have a hot dog station for you. <laughs> if you like cornbread and the rest of them, come on. Uh, we got Kona Ice, they bring a trailer, so if you like Kona Ice, uh, we got Kona Ice for the kids. Um, bounce houses for all ages. Um, one's an obstacle course, and then one's kind of for the smaller kids, so we're not going to throw the, the two-year-olds in with the eight-year-olds. I've been turning it. Survival so is so extremely important. Uh, and bring a chair. So, uh, please, if you're, I think we're going to open the registration for a couple more days for baptism or graduates. So make sure you jump on on that if you're wanting to get uh, baptized. That's important. Hey, so today is uh, Pentecost Sunday. We have three or four shots. Today's, today's uh, Pentecost Sunday. So maybe, maybe for, uh, it, it's not. We don't make it as elaborate as some of the others, and I'll talk here in a moment about that. But if you're new, uh, new to the faith, new to reading scripture, new to um, reading your word, studying your word, you'll find it in the book of Acts, the second chapter. You, you can actually start reading Acts chapter 1 and just start reading the whole book of Acts. You'll just see um, Jesus comes and begins to tell them in Acts chapter 1. He says, hey, John, come baptizing uh, in water. But Jesus said, I'm going to come baptizing in fire. Amen. Amen. I love that. I mean, he's, I'm going to come baptizing in, in fire. And then he just continues to go on. He tells them in Acts chapter 2, uh, the upper room, it says when they all got in one mindset, in one accord, uh, the Holy Spirit fell. There was major, I don't want to say chaos because God is not the author of chaos, but of peace. But to the world, it seemed chaotic. And sometimes to the world, to your friends, if you go to Impact Church and our worship and how we worship and how we get uh, maybe interactive in preaching and how we are, we might seem a little chaotic to the world. But biblically, we're, we're in the right pain. We're in the right action. Amen. We're in the right season. And maybe for some, we see all through the book of Acts that the mighty rushing wind and and the world thought they were drunk. And Peter said, these men are not drunk as you suppose for it is only the third hour of the day. But this is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel that in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Amen. 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 And so that's, that's what we are celebrating um, today. And, and I want to make sure, just to preference this real quick, and I want to jump into this message, is that here at Impact, I, I don't know maybe what church you grew up in and maybe... Um, where you went to Sunday school, those types of things. But we, we, we do not believe that the miracles, that the moving of the Holy Spirit, that the signs and wonders stopped after the book of Acts. Amen. There's a lot of churches, and maybe some of you don't know your, um, your, your doctrinal statements of a church, maybe... Your family's been going for generations and generations, but a lot of churches believe that the miracles and signs and wonders and things happen stopped after the book of Acts. The Bible says that he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And I believe that what he's done in the book of Acts, he's still doing today. Amen. As you look around, you can see many are uh, a living witness that God is still moving, he's still healing, he's still delivering, he's still feeling, he's still touching, he's still imparting his power and his presence. But, but I, I say all that to kind of pull this in a little bit. Is I, I really believe, and I've said this before, if you've been at Impact long enough, I really believe the average Christian in the average church is bulk, somewhere bogged down between Calvary and Pentecost. Come on. And, and I, let me just ride that wave a little bit for a second, and hopefully I can pull it together and make sense for you today. That we have been to Calvary for pardon. But we have not been to Pentecost for power. Come on. And so in saying that, our two most popular services that leadership wise, that we really have a lot of meetings and we prep our team and, and get the team going because there's going to be an overflow of people is our Christmas and Easter service. Those, 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 I mean, we can, we can run close to, between those two services, we can run close to 400 people. 
Come I on. think this last Easter and Christmas, I think Easter, and I'm not about numbers, but this is just from all the years of preaching. I can kind of look out to my wife says I'm pretty good at numbers, and so it's just a kind of guesstimate. But around, you know, 350 to 400 people, there's usually packed house. People grab that. Why? They grab that because you think, you think about it at Christmas time, you always hear the name Emmanuel. We do a walkthrough, uh, a kid's VBS, Christmas VBS, and they do a walk through Bethlehem and those types of things. Bethlehem or Emmanuel means God with us. We love that, that God is with us. God's with me. I don't know who you are, but God's with me. We love that. We rejoice in that. And then we move, depending on when, when it falls, but whether March or April, we move into Easter time. Everybody wears their Easter clothes and dressed up and, and pictures and stuff like that. We get excited because we talk about Calvary, what he had done on Calvary, that he shed his blood upon Calvary. Amen? Amen. Calvary means God for us. So we love to celebrate God with us, and we love to celebrate God for us. But Pentecost means God in us. And it's at that moment, it's that time, it's like, God, I love it. I'm going to come and I'm going to rejoice that you're with us. And I'm going to rejoice, and I'm going to tell all my haters, and I'm going to tell all my friends that you are for me. But God says, no, you're, you're bogged down in between that because I want to take it further. I want to be in you. I want my power to be in you. And got quiet. So I, I say that to say this. I have a friend that they have a horse on their property. And so they asked for my help on some things and so I go that this horse is in this horse pasture area just one horse and so they asked for my help and they were busy had some things going on and so I'm trying to do this well the horse is like won't leave me alone <laughs> like everything I do it's like following me around wanting to know what I'm doing and I'm like trying to get some things done and it's like Whoa! You know, doing, doing what horse things do. I was hoping to be like Mr. Ed, start talking or something. I can make some money off this thing. And so I begin to talk to him. He's like, hey, the horse is like, really? He's kind of bothering me. And they're like, oh, we're so sorry. We're so sorry. So they come out. They open the gate. He said, here's all you got to do. You come out. You open you open this gate. And the horse is going to come over. Well, it's got this thing. You're all horse people. What's the, is that a bride? Is that a, what is it? A halter on its head. It's a halter, if you didn't know. And so they, they go and they say, when the horse is there, it'll come here. And here's what you do. You take this thing. I learned this. It's called a lead. Yes. They said, you take this thing. They grabbed it off the gate. And it's, a, it's about this size. And they said, all you do is you take this. And what was the other thing it was called? The halter? Yeah. He said, it, right. I like that. I like the halter. Man, they're pretty horse people. And so they said, you take this lead and you just connect it underneath here, and then you let him out. And I'm like, I don't tie it to anything? They're like, no, just let him go. I'm like, he's going to leave. I'm like, no, this holds him back. I'm like, this big old horse. <laughs> and you got this little thing, not tied to anything, and you're telling me he's going to just stay in the yard. We're like, watch. Hook his little thing there to it and just the whole time I'm doing stuff, he's just out in the middle of the yard doing little horse things now. The chicken running around by him. Yeah. Stays in the yard the whole time. I'm there hours. I'm like, huh? Oh. So the next day I gotta come back. Now they did say, make sure it's important that you put this thing on. I'm like, okay, come on. This thing's I go the horse like it's, it's a bank. So the next day I go back, I open, I open the gate, it comes over like I'm getting out. It sees I have this thing. So it's just kind of hanging back a little bit. I'm kind of intimidated by horses. They're they're big, they're big creatures. So I start walking towards him. He's just looking at me and I'm like, going well, real slow. He lets me get like super close and I take my hand to go like this to put 
on there. And he does like a Deion Sanders, Jerome Bettis, Heinz Ward type. Boom, boom, boom. And just goes right around. I'm like, hey. Goes right around me out through the gate. And I'm like, hey, come back here. And so he just goes in the yard and starts eating. I'm like, okay, we don't need this thing. Like, he's fine. He's right in the yard. So I go about doing my thing. My phone starts blowing up. I'm like, Stephanie trying to get a hold of me? And I look down at my phone and it says, the horse is running down the road. <laughs> Did you put the lead on him? I did not put the lead on him. <laughs> and I was like, that is the most amazing thing. That the whole time that this horse, if it has that little, if it has that little lead on him, even though it's not tied to anything, it will stay within its parameters. But the moment the lead was not on him, that I didn't put the lead, he he was on I-22, something. I don't know how they got him back. He had freedom. So it kind of got me thinking of today's message. I know it's going to be a weird title, but I want to title today's message on Pentecost Sunday that the church has a lead. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We ask that you would just bless today's message, Lord, that you would just speak through me today. Lord, that it be just sown on good ground, Lord, that we would be the bride, that we would be the church that you are, that your word talks about, that you're coming back for without spot or without wrinkle, that we would be the church that, that as the book of Revelation says, that you do all these things, but I got this one thing, Lord, that we would just be pleasing in your sight, that we won't be the, that lukewarm church. We love you. We thank you in Jesus name. Amen. And so I thought about that, that I titled it, the, the church has a lead, because I started thinking about it, and the natural for this horse, just this thing, of attaching this thing to him and walking around, even though I'm still just amazed by how it's not tied to I don't know. Like, I just, I was just so, just dumbfounded by that. And I started thinking spiritually that whole time, I was trying to do what I was supposed to do, but I just kept thinking, and that's why I, had, I wrote it in my notes, the church has, has a lead. Because we're, we're almost the same way. That Christ died and he rose again. And he said that the same spirit that raised me from the dead dwells inside of you. That whom the son sets free is free indeed. He's called us for freedom. He's called us not to be bound in bondage. He's not called us to be bound to your past. He's not called you to be bound to that depression. He's not called you to be bound to that shame. He's not called you to be bound to that. He's called you to be free. He says, listen, I died and I shed my blood. I took the stripes on my back so that you would be free. But yet we still walk around with a leap. Our lead could be, our lead could be anywhere. Our lead could be religion. Our lead could be tradition. Our lead could be, I'm just familiar with certain things. I'm just familiar. This, this, this horse, it was this thing that kept him in the parameters. It's not like it was hundreds of acres. The yard is it, it maybe, maybe a half acre itself. The horse pasture is, is, is big, but yet this thing kept him in with just within the yard. And, and so often the church is the same way. The lead, the lead can be sin. The lead can be pride. The lead can be arrogance. The lead can be lethargicness. The church was never birthed to be weak, timid, scared, lazy, robotic, powerless. It was not intended to be robotic. It was not intended. Uh, Jesus dealt with the religious people. It was the religious. It was those that were in custody. That were familiar with customs. It was those uh, that were caught up in this religiosity of life that Jesus always messed with. Jesus messed with people's tradition. He'd heal on the Sabbath just to mess with people. He'd spit on ground just to mess with people. He would do things that would cause the Pharisees and the Sadducees just to go crazy. He would mess with their boundaries. He would... He would mess with their lead. He 
he said, no, 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 that, 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 that's not who I am. He, the, 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 the Pharisees and the Sadducees, this, this woman broke the law. She deserves death. She deserves death. But Jesus said, I'm going to rock your world. Jesus comes over, doesn't say anything, and starts writing on the ground, starts penning things. Many theologians, many scholars, many people believe that he was penning those guys, their little side cheeky boo's name up in there. The Pharisees and Sadducees, I think they had it all together that they had. He started writing names and he started writing Cheryl's name and all of a sudden one looked down and dropped the rock like, whoa, whoa. That, that, that's not. He started beginning to mess with them. But, but the church was intended to walk in power. The church was intended to walk in authority. The church was intended to be active. Advancing. Victorious. That's why it's important here at Impact Church, whether you've been here a year, whether you've been here five years, ten years, it's important for us. They, they call it the fancy word, they call it, uh, and I'll just say it, that our culture here at Impact Church of how we do things, our, our boundaries of how we do it, the culture of what we do, that if it's not within our culture, we just throw it out. Like if it's not fitting our culture, what we want the culture, that's just the fancy word that they use in pastoral podcast <laughs> but our culture is that you would come in and that anointing that power would get on you that you would be inspired not inspired by a two point message and move on with your life but inspired to become better inspired to walk in your purpose inspired to walk in freedom inspired to be who God called you to be not who the devil thinks you are not what your sin says you are not what your past says you are not what your generational mess says you are but what God has called that you're inspired to walk in that you would walk in authority that the chains that you come in would be broken and that can't happen in a weak, timid, broke down, busted up, dried up, rigor mortis, baptized and prune juice type church can accomplish. You got to have power. That you would experience that we pray, our leadership, people will come here, they serve, they help, they prep. People come here on Saturday night, they prep, they, they, they take things out of their Saturday night, they come here, they set up, they do this, they go here, they come early, they set up, they do all that. Whether it's donuts, whether it's coffee, whether it's setting up here, whether they're putting a microphone, whether they're coming out here. Why they do all that? So that you would experience the fire of God. That he talks about in Acts chapter 1. That you would have a place that you would experience the anointing of God. And that your faith will break free. Just like that horse. When that horse didn't have that lead and he knew it. Listen, this is what's so crazy about it. That horse had no idea that he wasn't tied to anything. That he could, he, he could go free. This, that kept him. But yet he was smart enough when he knew I had that thing, he knew freedom was coming. Freedom enough to when I turned around. That's what we want to see here at Impact Church. That we, we come to tell you that leadership team and the people and the preaching and the worship team comes to tell you, listen, take off that lead. You have not been called for this. You have not been called to bondage. But you have been called to freedom as the book of Galatians talks about. You've been called freedom for whom that son sets free is free, free indeed. That you are free to step into your purpose. You are free to step out of that generational mess. That you are free to walk in the plans and the purpose that God has for you. You are not who your ex said you are. You are not who that old boyfriend said. You are not what that doctor said. You are not what that lawyer said. They said you're going to be no good. You're not going to be able to come up. No, you are free. You're able to step in too. So okay, let me go. They 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 are in Acts Acts chapter one and two. They're they're in Jerusalem. They're in Jerusalem, and he's speaking to them. And they're in Jerusalem. And and and, and the last known words of Jesus during his earthly ministry. Is in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. They begin to ask him questions. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8. It says, but you shall receive power. This is Jesus. They're asking him questions. He says, listen. The this is the birthing of the church. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. 
and you shall be a witness to me in Jerusalem and all Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. He says, listen, you're going to be a witness, but I'm going to, I'm going to pour out my power. You grabbed a hold of Bethlehem that God is in us, Emmanuel, God in us. And you grabbed a hold of Calvary when I went on the cross and you were there at the grave. And you understand God for it. But now I got, I got you to understand that I want to be in you. I want to take you. I, 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 want, I want to be all in you. That when people see you, they don't see your mess. They don't see your sin. They don't see your disappointment. They don't see your past. They just see Jesus. They see the King of glory. They see the Ancient of Days. They see the Great I Am. They see the Prince of Peace. I'm going to preach this Pentecost Sunday. And so if I get a little wild crazy, come back next week and I'll be a little calmer. But i got to preach something down on the inside of me today. He said, you shall receive power. That word power in the Greek is the word dunamis, which we get the word dynamite. Like good times? Is that right? Like good times. If you ever, if you're old enough to re remember that, dynamite. That's you spiritually. That is you spiritually. You see me walking to Walmart and I'm going like this. Oh. It's just letting you know that I got some devils to battle. It lets me know I got some principalities I'm going in. It lets me know I got some troubles going. It lets me know I got some stuff. And I got to remind myself that I got some dynamite. But, 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 but here's the thing. We could, we could celebrate that and we could rejoice that. And I could preach that. And I could slap your neighbor and tell your neighbor dynamite. And, and you can walk around and high five people and tell them, I got that, I don't mind. But here's the kicker. He said, you shall receive power. Do you know why God gives you the Holy Spirit? Why he's poured out the Holy Spirit? Why he wants to fill you? To help you or the church, the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, to be effective. The power, he's saying this. He says, I'm going to pour out my spirit on you. It's going to come upon you. And you shall be. Witnesses. You shall be effective. He said, I'm not going to pour out my spirit. And y'all just going to be like, hey, 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 look at me. He says, you got to be effective. Can I go a little deeper? I got a few minutes. The power comes to do something, not to sit. Come on. The power comes to do something, not to sit. Amen. I got to ride that to, to I can break it, right? Because I got too much. The power comes to do something, not to sit. Come on. Okay, let me go this way. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me shake the bushes real quick. That's West Virginia terminology right there. <laughs> what did you just say? That's my down in the hall coming out of me. Shake the bush. Stay in your feet. So he sent us home already. <laughs> I love this church. <laughs> I want to preface this that I, I, I stole this little illustration right there from, from one of my buddies. But I thought it was so good. He, he said it a long time ago, but it always stuck with me. I was like, what am I doing? This is good. When I count to three, I want you to turn around and I want you to put your hand on the pew where you were just sitting. One, two, three. Go ahead, put your hand on that pew. You feel that warm spot that you've been sitting there for the last 30 minutes? That is not your contribution to the kingdom of God. We were not called to warm pews. We were not called to come in and say, I did my moment, I did my thing, I come to church, I did what you called. This is all, okay, I did it, I was here, Pastor, did you see me? No. He said, I've called the church to be effective. I called the church to have some power. I called the church to have some authority. I called the church to step in to what I have called the same thing right there for just a moment. I'm getting somewhere. 
So when I see that, I thought, oh. And for some reason, I just like to go down little rabbit holes in life. I'm like a Google doctor. <laughs> a doctor told me that. One of my friends is a doctor. He sent me a message. He's like, hey, you need to do this and do this. I was like, oh, I Googled this. He's like, okay. <laughs> and then Google Alexander. <laughs> But I went down and I was thinking, you know, I was like, oh, they're going to touch the, the pews. And, and for some reason, I just went down the road of pews. How did the pews come about? It's like when you see a squirrel, like, whoa, where did they go? And so I started going down the road of, of pews. Like, how did the word pews come about? Like, how was that established in the church? And Google says, not no religious website, just regular Google, says that pews were created. They started with a Special, they were created as special box seats where dignitaries and important families in a community would sit in church. In other words, only the upper echelon of the community would be, only those who had great coupon were allowed to sit in the pews. The rest of us had to maybe sit on the lawn or sit on the, the ground, but those that were somebody. I'm here today, Pastor. <laughs> Let me write my offering. How do you spell thousands? <laughs> Rest of us arms. <laughs> Hello. But it said, it made a comment here, and it said this about pews. The pew was initially a status symbol in churches. A status symbol. And I thought to myself, it still is. It's still a status symbol. It's still saying, look, I've arrived today. Look, I'm here. Did you see me today, Pastor? <laughs> I didn't lift a hand or smile or crack a smile, but I was here today. <laughs> <laughs> no, God says no. This is not what you 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 grab it. You you grab the hold of Bethlehem. You grab the hold of Calvary, but you're not grabbing a hold of Pentecost. You 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 celebrate Bethlehem. You're celebrating Calvary. You got all teary eyed when the video was up here about Christ on the cross, but now the Pentecost. God says I, I want to be in you. I want my power down inside of you. I don't I don't want you. I, I don't need a show. I don't need somebody that you've had it all together. He says, I'm looking for somebody that's been broken and says, God, if I don't have you, if you don't come in my life, God, if you don't invade my life, I'm going to fall to pieces. You are the lifter of my head. You, in you, I need to live and move and have my bed. I'm nothing, God. Without you, I'm absolute. I'm a hot mess without you, God. I need you, God. I'm not coming in with my high heels and my nice outfits and say, look at me. I have arrived. No, we need some people that have been broken, that they know that the only author of their life, the only savior of your life is the king of glory, the ancient of days, the great I am, the prince of peace, the almighty God. Stay right where you're at just for one second. He said, I'm looking for, he said, I'm not looking for, God is with me. God is for me. Don't mess with me, haters. Do you see who's got my back? He says, no, we need God in us. That don't have an agenda. That don't have anything that say, God, I need you. He says, I'm looking for those in the pews that are that are not special box eating. Yeah. You ever have to go to a ball game and sit up in peanut heaven? <laughs> and you look down there and everybody's that big. And then you look over in the box seats. And they're all like, all the food and all the great things. And they got the AC. You're up there in peanut heaven. I'm like, trying to stay alive. <laughs> but he says, I'm looking for those, not to be cue warmers, but I'm looking for those that will come in and say, say, you know what? 
I don't need preeminence. I don't need prosperity. I don't need position. I don't need promotion. I don't need popularity. Pastor, I come in today. I don't have to be first. I don't have to be right. I don't have to be tops. I don't have to be recognized. I don't have to be praised. I don't have to be regarded. I don't have to be rewarded. I didn't come for you. I didn't come for you. I didn't come for you. I'm chasing him now. I got to have him now. If you didn't mention me, that's all right. I'm not going to get offended. I'm not going to have a chip on my shoulder. I'm not going to leave the church and say, well, they didn't recognize me. They didn't talk about me. I didn't come for them. I didn't come for that. I came for the king of glory. I came for the one who can bring change. I came for, I'm never going back to that church. They didn't recognize me. They go. We ain't looking for you anyhow. We're looking for some people that will get on their face, get on their knees and cry out, holy, holy, holy. The Lord God Almighty. Come on, preacher. He says, I'm looking for people, not pure warmers, but I'm looking for those that no longer, that cannot be bought, compromised, detoured, lured away, turned back, deluded, or delayed. He said, I'm looking for people, not to warm a pew, but those that will not flinch in the face of sacrifices. Come on. Who will not hesitate in the presence of the enemy. Who will not ponder at the pool of popularity or meander in the maze of mediocrity. He says, I'm looking not for those that will warm a pew. Not to those that will come in and say, I've arrived. He says, I'm looking for those that won't give up, shut up, let up. So they stayed up, stored up, prayed up, paid up, preached up for the cause of Christ. He says, I'm looking. I'm not looking for a church that's being led. He says, I'm looking for a church that will go till he comes. Give till they drop and work till he stops us. I need to go somewhere. When I count to three, I need you to get out of your pew. High five about seven people and tell them I'm not a pew warmer. One, two, three. Find them. Tell them I'm not a pew warmer. I'm not a pew warmer. I'm not a pew warmer. Da, 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 da. Oh, some of you still can't high five. Some of you, I'm, I'm coming down your road. I got a few more minutes. Oh, John, you better come up here before I get the real of preaching up in there. I'm not a pew warmer. Yeah, 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 watch. Watch. Watch, I got, I got a few minutes. I got, I got a few minutes. I got a few minutes because now, because now I messed you all up. Now I messed you all up because you, you were, you were fine. You were like, oh, hey, I didn't mind you getting excited, but this, this touch of neighbor and high five and this, this just don't belong in the house of the Lord, brother. Watch, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm coming after you on Pentecost Sunday. Watch, you be seated. Watch, he says, "You shall be a witness to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the other most parts of the earth." Right? They said, "Let's stay in Jerusalem." They become comfortable in Jerusalem. He said, "No, no, you're supposed to be a witness." Everywhere. They're like, now nah, we like it right. We like it right here. This is nice and comfortable. This is our pew. We've been through so much already. This is this, let's just stay right here. The problem now that we are facing, the problem with the church today is that we stay in our Jerusalem. We stay to ourselves. We stay where we know all the songs. We stay where they look like us. They dress like us. They talk like us. I know, and this will, this, this will get me in trouble. You can't fire me because we started the church. <laughs> but he's just an arrogant guy, isn't he? <laughs> Cheryl, we're never coming back. <laughs> I say that why? Not mocking. You're staying in your Jerusalem. Come on. What, what, what do you mean? Because I, I know, I know people. I know, and this is going to hurt. But you got to convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. That's what I've been called to do. I know people who will stay in church that's not even preaching biblical truth. A church that has no love, a church that has no conviction, 
a church that is more culturally acceptable than biblically acceptable. You can sit on that and take it home. But the reason they stay is not because they're trying to get free. The reason they stay is that they are more comfortable with the customs. They are more co comfortable in religion. They are more comfortable in the generations of family members that attended. They, they are more, they are, they, they are they, let me put it this way. They are in love with the traditions of man rather than being lovers of God. That's good. They would rather stick with the customs. They would rather stick with the tradition. I like this. This is comfortable. I want to stick here. I, I got something for you today, boo. I got something for you today. Because the Bible says that you have a form of godliness, but you're denying the power. When we talk about the power, you're denying. You have a form. You have tradition. You have customs. You have this uh, religion. Obviously, you are no better than the Pharisees and Sadducees. They can be up there singing. I don't know why this is popping my head. They can be singing quiet rock, just so you my age. <laughs> oh yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it'd be your deal. <laughs> that's a good thing. But they become so comfortable, the churches become so comfortable. The churches say, God, we'll let you move, but you have to stay within the parameters. Uh, you have to, it has to be here, God. It has to stay within this moment, within this era. And the, and the disciples were doing the same thing. Oh, that's great. We got filled with the Holy Ghost and all of this is great. Oh, God is moving, but but we're staying here. God's like, no, 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 no. He gave him some time. Acts chapter 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Goes to Acts chapter 8. You read it when you get home. God says enough is enough. Enough is enough. I did not instill in you to sit back. So it says Acts chapter 8. I think verse 1 says that he allowed persecution. In other words, he made them uncomfortable. And when he made them uncomfortable, they scattered. He's like, I'll get you out one way or another. I'll get you to Judea. I'll get you to Samaria. I'll get you. I'll get you to the uttermost parts of the earth. The Holy Spirit, I really believe, is getting ready to break the church's routine, break the church's pattern, get them to move into the birthing position for the King of Glory in the Ancient of Days, the Great I. Woo! Amen. No, enough is enough. Uh, I gotta get you. I gotta get you. It makes you uncomfortable. That's why I like to do a high five. That's why I do a touch of neighbor. It makes you uncomfortable. God wants you to be uncomfortable. He wants you to be uncomfortable. That he can get you to move into what he has called you to do. You don't believe it? Let's go. I'm ending with this. You're like, I've heard this one before. <laughs> ending with this. 30 minutes later. <laughs> don't pull the scripture up yet. Just hold on to it for a moment. In 2 Kings chapter 5, 2 Kings chapter 5, it talks about a man named Naaman. And this is what the Bible says about Naaman in scripture, that he's a captain, captain of the army. That means he's somebody. That when they walked by, like, it was like, oh, Captain Naaman. He was somebody, had his stuff together. The Bible says he was a great man. The, the Bible says he was honorable. He was a mighty man of valor, it says. Almost sounds to me like he, he's the one that wrote about pews. <laughs> he's the upper echelon of the community. He's somebody that's well respected. He's somebody that's got his stuff together. But the Bible says, but he had leprosy. I could have preached today's message about everyone has a but, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> he had, he had, he had, he had, he would see all these great things, but he had an issue. But he had a problem. But he had a situation. And a lot of us here today, you, you, you're a great person, but you're struggling. You, you, you walk around with a smile on your face, and, and that's great, and, and people respect you, but you're struggling with depression. But you're struggling with sin. But you're struggling with anxiety. But you're struggling with your past. But you're struggling with shame. He was all these great things, but he had leprosy. 
He had this thing that, that could not be fixed by anything in the world, that could not be fixed by any uh, level of, that he had in his life. The, the, as he kept going up and up and up and still couldn't fix that, he had leprosy. He was respected, well-known, honorable. People see him, yes, but he had this butt that could not be fixed. And I love this here. They said, hey, this prophet, he can heal you of this butt. He can heal you of this leprosy. Now watch what happens. Can you pull the scripture out now? Then Naaman went with his horses and chariots, and he stood at the door of Elijah's house. He went to his house, right? And Elijah sent a messenger to him say, hey, go wash yourself in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored to you, and you shall be clean. Verse 11. But Naaman became furious, <laughs> mad. Some people leave Impact Church furious. And he went away and said, Indeed, I said to myself, He will surely come out to me, stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. He says, No, 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 no. This guy said, Your leprosy can be restored if you go dip. Naaman says, no, 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 no. I need you to do it within my parameters. I need you to do it within the confines of my custom, of my tradition. I need you just to wave, wave, wave your, I need you wave. We have become the church of Naaman. You say, how have we become the church of Naaman? The church is, comes in and says, Pastor, just do your thing and let me go home. Just, just preach a couple messages. Just preach a couple points and, and head on home. Just, just, just wait. Just do your little thing, Pastor. I want to go. I, I just, just do. Just wait. Just, 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 just go. John, don't keep singing songs. John, don't keep worshiping. John, don't keep repeating songs. Just do your little thing. Just sing. Just sing a little bit, John. Just sing. It is, no. We have become so much like the church, we, uh, the church with the lead. We want God to move, but we want God to move within the confines of our life. I come to let you know that I am not a puppet. And you, if you're looking for a pastor that is a puppet and is going to give you a longhorn sermon, a point here, a point there, and a bunch of bull in between, you found the wrong house in the wrong place. I'm here to let you know you can get free. I'm here to let you know that he will set you free. I'm here to let you know you've got a plan for your life. He's got a purpose for your life. I'm here to let you know. No, no, just do your thing, Pastor. Just do. Just, just wave your hand, Pastor. Just do a couple points and let us go. Get us out in time. Get us out over here. We need to go. Time to stick it, Pastor. Time to stick it. That's not the church that he has called. Amen. Name it becomes furious. Name is bad. And somebody come up to him and said, all right. If you want to live with it, then live with it and shut up. But if you really want to be free, then you will break out. You will not allow this to hold you back. Well, you know, the, the church I grew up in and the, the church I was around and, and the church I've been involved in and, and the church, and, 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 yeah, well, you, you don't do that. You don't do that kind of stuff. I don't, I don't know why they. I don't know why they lift their hands. And, uh, we, we don't lift that, our hands in that kind of. I don't know why people are so loud. People are shouting. I will give you biblical illustrations. Everything you walk through the Book of Psalms, and I can show you scripture after scripture after scripture that talks about rejoicing, talks about praising the Lord, talks about shabbating, talks about lifting up His name, talks about rejoicing. And so, so now I don't want to get away from this. And so then Naaman kind of it doesn't say in scripture, but Naaman was kind of like. Hmm. Almost kind of like the prodigal son. He came to himself. And now I can just see. He's like, man. I, I'm, I'm somebody though. What are they going to think of me? If they see me dipping in this nasty jord. I'm the captain. I have a reputation to protect. And so now he's in this dilemma. This quadrant. Of life. I'm here. Mm. Do, do I, do, do, do I want to keep my. Do I want to keep my. 
reputation intact? Or do I want to be free? Do I, do I want to be, do I want to be somebody? Or do I want to be free? And he comes to himself, and, and he, didn't, he didn't say this, but I'm thinking he just said this to himself. He finally said, you know what, enough is enough. And it says he walked down this nasty old river. He's like, all rivers, why that? It's like going down to go dip in the Ohio. Like, okay, come on. Can't we go to Piedmont Lake or something? <laughs> but I believe he started going down, and he went down, and not just once, seven times. And I really believe, I really believe, I'm not 100% sure, but I really believe that as he was heading down, he was saying, God, shake up the ground of all my tradition. Woo! And then as he went down again, God, he was like, break down the walls of all my religion. And then as he went down again, he was saying, God, your way is better. I, I wanted to do it my way, God. I wanted it this way. I wanted you to move this way. I wanted you to do this in church. I wanted you to do this. I only wanted a couple songs. I only wanted a couple things. But God, your way is better, God. Do your way, God. Do how you want to do it, God. If you want to explode in the upper room, explode in the upper room, God. If you want to touch, then I'm going to touch. If you want me to touch a neighbor, I'll touch a neighbor. All I want to be is free. I'm tired of holding this blood. I'm tired of dealing with this issue. Whatever it takes. If i got to lift my hands, I'll lift my hands. If you want me to Bible study, I'll go to Bible study. If you want me to serve, I'll serve. If you want me to get baptized, I'll get baptized. If you want me to sign up, I'll sign up. Whatever it is, God. I just want you, God. I want more of you, God. I got to be Yeah. 
I want all that you have for me. Lord, I want that dunamis power in me. Fill me. Agitate me. Make me uncomfortable. I want more of you. Less of me. More of you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Hey, listen, if the ushers haven't come forward, the ushers can come forward. Matt Johnson, did you do double duty today? I love you, dude. <laughs> the ushers can come forward on your pews. You'll see offering envelopes. You can uh, you can give cash through that offering envelope. Or if you want to give online or you want to give through the app, if you don't have the app, you can download the app through the app store. And you can just get on that little thing on the jigger, the QR code. I almost lost my mind there for a second. Like, I like look around and see different people sitting in different be like, mm, it's a all. You can give to that QR code. Don't forget the offering. If you're here for the first time, you got a connection card. Make sure you give it to me or somebody <laughs> will you put it in that bucket. If you're like, i got to get out of here as fast as I can, then you put it in the offering bucket. But we do have a gift for you. Other than that, once the ushers go through, you're free to go. John, can you add that sound on just a little something? All right. Once the ushers get through, don't tap over anything. All right. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day.